Welcome back to the Liferay DXP Basics course. In this module, we'll be learning about creating your unique site brand with themes. In this module, we'll be having the following takeaways. First, we'll learn how to control the branding of the platform by creating and customizing different theme modules. We'll also understand how to use clay with bourbon mixins for styling the platform that we're making. And then we'll be able to add some custom JavaScript to add functionality within a Liferay theme. And finally, we'll understand how to configure a theme. So in order to follow along in the exercises provided in this module, we'll need a couple of things. First, we'll need Java JDK. This is the Java developer kit. Install to run Liferay DXP. And there's a link in order to download it right here. If it's your first time setting up Java, you also have to configure a Java underscore home in all caps variable. This is Java underscore home. And you can Google for instructions on how to do that on your respective operating system. You also need the module exercises in the following folder structure. If you're on Windows, this will be in a Liferay folder in your C drive. You can see right there, if you're on Unix, then this will be in your user home directory with a directory called Liferay there. You also need NPM Yeoman and the Liferay theme generator installed. You can download this here at nodejs.org. You can install it by running npm install g yo. And then you can run npm install g generator library theme in order to install the theme generator. Oh, we have the following use case. So let me just remind us of this. We're working for Livingston Hotels and Resorts, and there's three parties that are primarily responsible for our use case. The first is the web team. This team is responsible for implementing branding and functionality for the ideal user experience for customers and employees. So this team is focused on user experience and the interactivity of, of the page. You have the design team as responsible for producing mockups for web developers. So this is like the visual models of what the site should be like. And then the web developers, they are responsible for implementing the mockups provided by the design team. So they are responsible for the technical portions, turning the models into reality. And they will be using technologies they're familiar with, like NPM, Yeoman, and React. So these front-end technologies. What's the, what's the stakes here? Well, you can increase user retention with a pleasing theme and increasing user retention leads to obviously a lot of different benefits, um, but when users are on your site for longer, they might make purchases, this might increase revenue. And this also decreases front-end development time. This is less cost, shorter turnarounds, and this is a, a more responsive form of development. And now let's talk about adding custom branding to Liferay with themes. We can think of themes as a set of stylings or templates that unify how pages of a particular site look. For example, they might all use a particular template or they might all use a specific font or a font size or a font color. And the theme will help to hold all of that together. Developers can build custom themes in order to implement the branding across different sites on the platform too. Now theme modules include a collection of package files and this includes SCSS, JavaScript, images, frame marker templates, and theme configurations. Now we'll talk about the base theme a little bit. You can build the following base themes. There's two of them. One is unstyled, the other is styled. The unstyled maintains basic functionality with no styling whatsoever. And then the style inherits from the unstyled theme, but it adds in a little bit of styling. So the clay base, which is the SCSS implementation of the lexicon language. To build and customize a new theme, we can do the following. We'll create the theme. So we're basically generating the source from a base theme, which is either unstyled or styled. We'll customize the HTML. We'll define some styles in the SCSS. So maybe font size, font color, the different font that you'll use. And customize images, add in some JavaScript, and then finish the theme module configuration. And we'll cover this in the next slide. In order to build a theme, we'll need Liferay Theme Generator. And this is a Yeoman generator that can be used for quick and easy development of Liferay themes by running yo Liferay theme. And so this is a command line command that you can run. And in addition to creating the whole theme, there are also some sub generators that are included to generate different things like layouts, themelets, and import. So the commands are listed in the second column here, and you can generate layout templates with an interactive vim. You might create small reusable pieces of CSS for your themes, and these are called themelets. Or you can import pre-existing Liferay themes from a SDK into the NPM process using the import command. After generating a theme, we'll have to customize the source files a little bit. 
So let's talk about what each of the files represent. So portal normal FTL, this is the free marker template containing the main structure of the page. So this is the main HTML source file. If we want something to appear in a different location, if we want to remove something altogether, we'll be modifying it in here, portal normal FTL. And then we have underscore custom SCSS, and this is used as the styling source file for all global styling. So if you wanted to make a global font size, change the font globally, you'll put your styling in this file. We have main.js, and this is used for global JavaScript. And so you might put helpful functions here. You might put something that runs on page load in here. And then finally, you have the theme configuration file, and this is liferay look and feel XML. So we'll be customizing the theme HTML files most often because we might want to change how a certain widget looks or the location of a certain uh, default element. And the portal normal FTL, it contains three main sections within the body wrapper div. And if you look on the left side, there's a picture. The wrapper is in blue, so this represents kind of like the entire page of the body. Then you have three sections. You have the banner section. This is the top. This includes things like the logo, navigation, which is pretty commonly moved around. You have sign-in link, which is pretty important, page title, site name. Then you have the content section. This is the middle portion, and this includes the code needed to render widgets as well as content. So you'll see a lot of includes here. You'll see some free marker code that imports widgets. And then finally, you have the footer section at the bottom. This is kind of like the signature of the page. And so it says powered by Liferay by default, but you can change that to display something else that you wanted to say. Now let's talk about free marker in Porno Normal FTL. For example, developers can find the control menu macro that has the control menu at the top of the platform. And this is represented by the at sign with liferay.control menu. So it makes it really simple to, to access some menus or some elements that are commonly used and seen on the page. Another example can be found in the header with uh, include navigation. And this is using a free marker if statement combined with the include to read the navigation FTL file. So if this page has navigation, and if the setup of the page is complete, then we want to include the navigation FTL, and this will display the navigation bar after the page is loaded. So we have navigation, pop-ups, and application. Some aspects of the portal normal are simply read and kept as separate FTL files, and this helps with modularity, so you're not jamming a million different widgets or however many different elements you want all into portal normal. If we develop them in different FTL files, we can maintain them more easily. They also increase reusability. And so if you wanted to put navigation.ftl in a page that doesn't normally contain navigation, maybe you're creating a new template for your theme, uh, then you can use that without having to copy the entirety of how navigation is written into your page. And so in the base themes, we have uh, separate FTL files for navigation, portal pop-up, and portlet FTL. The portal normal file, they include these files or display these different free marker templates using the include directive. And so you'll include the full template path, and then you'll include the file name uh, or append that after the full file name. Now we can use and customize free marker variables. And so the initial FTL is a special file this is found in the base theme that includes all of the variables and all of the Liferay APIs by default. And the developers can find all of the variables used throughout the free marker files in their base theme. And so this is kind of like an accelerator. It defines all the useful variables that you might commonly refer to. If you have any custom variables and macros, uh, you could add that to the init custom FTL. It includes a line that reads the init custom file, and then it has the custom init comment. Then you can include the init custom FTL, uh, or this is there for you already. And then you can include any variables, any definitions, any macros there, uh, and you'll be able to access that from the rest of your free markers. And so this allows developers to add any new variables or macros to the theme without needing to modify the generated init FTL directly. So some of the common init FTL variables are included at the top of the init FTL files. You might see theme display. This is pretty commonly used because it holds a lot of uh, the pertinent current information on the page. Uh, you have theme settings that you might want to access. CSS classes are pretty useful to know how a current element is styled. And you can read through the entire list to see some of what's available to you in init FTL.